going on guys welcome back to another video on the channel today is sunday and that means it is time for us to do some technical analysis and look at some charts to watch for next week if you're watching the market on friday you know we got that higher than expected non-farm payrolls not good for tech stocks because we're maybe one step closer to the fed starting to taper to interest rates starting to increase so we got a little bit of a curveball there on those tech stocks we saw a little bit of a fall on the nasdaq so we're gonna have to pay attention to that see how that sort of goes into next week and also look at how these dow stocks got a little bit of a push higher from that news so in today's video we're going to look at some tech stocks we're going to look at some dow stocks which got benefit from that non-farm payroll number and we're also going to look at a crypto stock i'm sure you guys know which one it is but if you've been watching the crypto market this weekend it's been very strong and it should translate into monday morning so let's go ahead and look at these charts let's go ahead and do some technical analysis after watching today's video, if you enjoy it, press that like button for me. It helps out the video. It helps out the channel a ton. Subscribe if you want to stay tuned for more and make sure to press that bell notification so you know every single time that I post. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the three tech stocks that I am watching into next week. Now, before we jump into these names, I quickly want to say that you have to watch the NASDAQ tonight when the future is open and into tomorrow morning how the nasdaq performs into tomorrow morning as well as into intraday tomorrow will ultimately decide how these tech stocks perform it will be very difficult for the names that we talk about today to perform in the opposite of the nasdaq if we start to get more slippage on the tech stocks if we see more slippage slippage on the nasdaq then these stocks will most likely move down as well but we're still going to look at some technical levels to watch to the downside to the upside so we are aware of what could happen here on these names today i just wanted to go over that i want to make sure everyone knows that these names will move with the nasdaq ultimately and technicals will not matter as much if we start to see more downside on the nasdaq due to that non-farm payroll number we saw on friday so with that said let's go ahead and jump into these names the first one here is going to be snow snow i've been watching this 270 level for some time now i actually have a position in it right now looking for more upside before earnings is released now the reason i got into this name was the break of 270 actually also 275 so 275 and 270 were two very important levels i was watching now the reason i am still holding this left this stock this position is because of the hold that we are seeing at a previous retest level so i'm going to show you that right now we had a very nice downtrend on snow nice inverse head and shoulders have been holding a pretty bullish uptrend here for a few months now and we are starting to see a, you know a nice trend perform and starting to see if it can make higher lows continuously here on snow something that i really like right now on snow is the hold of this previous resistance so if we zoom in here to the last month you guys will notice that we've been holding some nice retest levels so the first retest level that we held was right around this 252 we were able to break above this 252 right here. We were able to find support at it and move higher once again. So that's a nice little support zone right there. A nice little break and retest level right there around 252. Now the next one that is currently happening right now is around 270. So if we see these previous highs right around 270, you'll notice that we were able to break above this level right here on the 3rd of August. And we have been able to hold that previous level. So if I go ahead and draw a demand box here or a little, a little support area right here around 270, you can see that we found resistance, found resistance. We are able to break through and now we are finding nice support above that level. That is previous resistance turning into support and that is keeping me bullish here on snow. So if I break this down to the four hour chart, you're going to see this even closer. So here's the four hour. Here are some of the stair step patterns that I have seen. So right here at 270, you'll see how we had resistance come in at 270. We had resistance come in here at 270 again. And when we saw this breakout, we have seen a very nice hold and some very bullish wicks back to the upside at that 270. Now, what does that show me? That is showing me, just like I said, resistance turning into support. That is a very bullish thing to see. So if we break this down one more step down to the hourly chart, you'll see that if we break this to the hourly even closer even uh, you know sort of magnified in here you can see the very nice support that we have seen at this 270 and if we just go to the last day on friday look at this price action we saw at 270 on friday look at this dip and look at the strong reaction off that 270 level so 
I'm bullish here. I want to see if this can continue higher. I like the support down at 270, and I want to see if snow can continue to grind higher, maybe back up to around this previous high of around $300 a share. Now, of course, like I said earlier, it's going to depend how this NASDAQ holds up. If we get more strength in the tech market, I think snow will be one to benefit here. I want to see this thing hold 270. I want to see it start to move up before earnings. I have no interest in holding my position through earnings. I want to see if I can get a hold of 270 and continue to push here towards 300 next week. So that is number one. I like the stair steps. I like the previous lows turning into support. I'm sorry, the previous highs turning into support, resistance into support. Let's see if that can continue this coming week. Number two is going to be Roku. Roku is one that has fallen pretty nicely off earnings. You guys have probably seen me look at this chart before, but I wanted to quickly give you an update on what I'm looking at here. So let's delete some of these circles because they're all over the chart. You can see I've been looking at some of these levels, but the important level that I have been watching is right around where we are at this current moment. It's right around the 380 to 385 level. So the reason I'm looking at that is because of all the circles you just saw in my chart, previous support, resistance, turning into support here, and I'm looking to see if it can turn into support once again. At this current moment, we are having a little bit of difficulty at this 50 SMA. You can see we have not been able to clear this 50 SMA on Roku as of now. We got a very nice earnings pullback. We are right on this uptrend. We have held this uptrend nicely. We're also right at this previous demand zone. So can Roku if the tech market stays strong, see how I'm talking about the tech market. If that tech market stays strong, I want to see Roku find some support here and try to move back higher off of this trend line and off of this previous resistance turning into support. If we can get support here twice, like we have seen in about the last month, that would be a great potential opportunity to play Roku off this trend line back maybe towards this 460, maybe uh, the realistic target would be back at the 20 SMA, but the stretch goal would probably be around this 444 to 460. Now, of course, if the NASDAQ is weak, we could, we could see more slippage next week. We definitely don't want to see this break this uptrend. So this uptrend has been pretty solid. We don't want to see that break. So let's see if Roku can hold up next week. We definitely have an important level here. You can see right around 380 resistance, support. Want to see this turn into support once again here in the coming weeks. If it can, fantastic. This could be a very nice play, maybe a little bit of consolidation and then a move back off this level. So Roku is number two, watching this level around 380, looking to see if it can hold up. We'll need some NASDAQ support next week. If we get that, I think Roku will be one to benefit. Number three is going to be AMD. Now, AMD is one that I am looking for some downside. Now, here's why. AMD has made an, an, an incredible run, right? This is nothing short of incredible. Probably people made a ton of money here on the upside, and that's fantastic. I love to see that. Very nice push, very strong push. Now, is it like AMD to make a move like this? Not necessarily. I haven't seen AMD make a move like this in quite some time. There is a catalyst behind it. Earnings were great. Some news with Apple. So it is nice to see. But here's the formation that I started to see and why I'm starting to get a little bit bearish on this move and maybe we start to see a little bit of a pullback do i think it gives up the entire move maybe not do i think there is some downside to play absolutely so if you guys have been watching my live streams you know that we were watching this 20 sma on the hourly chart every single time that it touched this line over the last week when it was starting to move higher it bounced off of it look at all these circles look at all these touches one two three four five and six Six times, it pulled back to that 20 SMA and bounced off it beautifully. Now, on, fr on Thursday, instead of bouncing here, this would have been a perfect bounce off the 20 SMA higher. Instead of getting that bounce, what did we get? We got a fall through the 20 SMA and a very weak day here on AMD. Now, on Friday, you could have just said, you know, that was a little bit of a pullback. Let's see if we can push this thing back towards highs. On Friday, what, did, what is the first thing that we saw here on Friday? It was a lower high. A lower high has formed here on Friday. This was your previous high. This is your lower high. That is, this, that is the indication of a downtrend, potentially starting to see a downtrend here on AMD. Now, of course, 
AMD could do something crazy. It could bounce here, maybe break out of this little flag pattern that's forming. And, you know, maybe we get more upside. But this is the first day. This is the first lower high on this run. Could there be some more downside here on AMD? I think there could be. Uh, another thing that I would say here that could be forming is a very nice little head and shoulders formation. This is your right head. This is your, I'm sorry, this is your right shoulder. Here is your head and here is your left shoulder. That could be forming a very nice head and shoulders, which is a bearish uh, technical analysis formation. And maybe you start to get a little bit more downside, maybe watching some of these previous highs. So here's a high to watch. Here's another high to watch. And maybe you start to see some of the, you know, some of these levels start to get tested. So as of right now, I think the trend has changed on AMD. That's the biggest takeaway, I believe, from this analysis here. The trend has clearly changed. It is no longer making higher highs every day. It has now created a lower high, which could indicate some more pressure to the downside. What you could also do here, if you like to use Fibonacci retracements le levels, you could go ahead and pull out a Fib from, this, uh, wh from where this move sort of started and draw it up to the top. <clears throat> right around 122.50, and you can see that we are now pulling back to some important FIB levels. Maybe it finds some support at 38.2, maybe you get a pullback to the 50% retracement, which is also correlating to around these previous levels right here of around 106, or maybe you get a pullback to the 61.8. So there's many ways to try to judge where this pullback ends, where you start to find support. You can look at these FIBs, you're right at that 38.2 right now. What I'm looking at, is the fibs i'm looking at the head and shoulders that has formed here on the hourly chart one two and three and i'm also looking at the lower high that has formed possibly starting of a downtrend so let's see where amd goes let's see how this performs biggest takeaway right now is the trend has clearly changed so what does that mean for next week it means that you could see more downside you could also see that big explosion back higher but the trend has changed this is a must watch next week. So that is number three. And that is the last tech stock that we will look at today. So guys, number four, we're going to get into the bank stocks. Bank stocks had a fantastic day on Friday after the non-farm payroll number. If there's higher interest rates coming, that is good for banks. JP Morgan is the one that I'm watching. Now, the first reason I'm watching JP Morgan is because if you look at some of their counterparts, Goldman Sachs, uh, that's not Goldman Sachs. This is Goldman Sachs. If you look at Goldman Sachs, through all-time highs on Friday, a very nice bounce off of this support of 350. If we look at Morgan Stanley, very nice bounce through all-time highs. So you have Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley through all-time highs. Could that help JP Morgan try to catch up, try to get more upside on, you know, on Monday of next week? All of these stock, all of these stocks had very nice support areas. So you can see 84 was for Morgan Stanley. Goldman Sachs was around 350. If we go to Bank of America, a very similar level here, around 38. So if we go to JP Morgan, you can see a very nice base here has formed around 147. You have support one, two, three, and four. You have very nice support here around 147 on JP Morgan. Now, you can see we started to have this gap up here on Friday. We definitely have some resistance around here, right around 158, 160. You can see that we've had some resistance in the past right here. Pretty big, uh, pretty scary wick right there. And a nice little resistance come in around here at 158. So next week, can we break this 158? Is this a level that we can get through? I would be watching this. Can JP Morgan catch up to some of their, their, you know, their competitors? Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. Can it catch up and try to break and try to get to all-time highs as well? That is something that I'm going to be watching. There is definitely some strength in the bank stocks right now. There, you know, There's good news that came out for them on Friday. If interest rates are going to come in the future, if we're going to start seeing those hikes, I don't know when it's going to happen. Not going to say it's short term, but if there's any positivity, any increased possibility of, of higher interest rates, banks will benefit from that news. So we got that news on Friday. And if there's more continuation, I want to be watching JP Morgan as a potential move here for bank stocks. I don't want to play Goldman Sachs. I don't want to play Morgan Stanley because they're through all-time highs. Of course, they could get more movement, but I want to see if I can catch the one that is lagging just a little bit here and potentially breaking out of a big breakout level here at 158, 159. So JP Morgan, 
through this 158. Let's see if it can move. Let's see if those bank stocks can get more strength on Monday. If they can, this is the one that I'm going to be watching. Nice support at 147. Nice little formation we're holding here. If we can break this channel, I think you could definitely see a move next week. All-time highs in Goldman Sachs, all-time highs in Morgan Stanley. Why can't JP Morgan get there as well? Let's see what happens. Let's see how Monday performs. Let's see how those bank stocks do. All right, guys. So last but not least, let's look at those crypto stocks. We're actually going to look at two. We're going to look at Mara and we're going to look at Coinbase. So Mara, a very nice breakout over the last two days. And I would assume that this stock opens higher on Monday. If the crypto market stays where it is right now, we will definitely see a higher open here on Monday, a gap up on Monday. Not sure where it's going to be, but I definitely know that if the crypto market stays where it is right now, expect a gap up on you know tomorrow on Mara, on Riot, maybe even on Coinbase. So looking at Friday, you can see we broke out of this very nice little consolidation level. You can see we had previous resistance all right here. Resistance, resistance coming in. We broke out of that level yesterday or last week on Friday. A nice breakout for Mara. Breaking out of this resistance, breaking out of this consolidation. Can this move get us back up to this 38 resistance? Can it push us even higher, maybe back up to this 44 resistance? There's definitely some levels to watch above. 38 would be the first, 44 would be the next. But this is a very nice breakout. Nice consolidation, strong breakout above the 100 SMA on the daily chart. This could definitely get a move next week. So not much technical analysis here. It's going to be very correlated to the crypto market, but the breakout is there from Friday. The movement in the crypto market is definitely there. So I would definitely be watching Mara and Riot next week, looking at some of these resistance levels, 3850, 44, and watch Riot with Mara. So some nice moves. Mara Riot potentially breaking out, potentially gap ups tomorrow morning with the crypto market. Keep an eye on those. Now, let's look at Coinbase because Coinbase has been one that I have been watching for some time now. You guys know Coinbase IPO'd, really did not do much since the IPO. A lot of insider selling. It was a direct listing, so everyone was selling off their shares, right? But you can see support has come in very strong. One, two, three, triple bottom here on Coinbase and a little bit of a consolidation zone. 260. Put this on your charts. Do not forget this level. 260 has been an absolute brick wall on Coinbase. Every time we have seen any movement near 260, it has got wrecked off that level. So when will Coin get above 260? When will it break and retest this level? That is when I will become interested as a buyer. I will not touch Coinbase until we break and we retest this level and form this as support. I want to see 260 form support. I want to see it hold as support before touching this name. 260 has been a very difficult level. And until that level proves to me that it can hold as support, that is when I will be a buyer. So maybe that is coming up. Maybe with this crypto move, you will see Coinbase break 260 and try to hold it as support. But either way, look at this chart. Look at the base it has formed. Look at the potential upside that is there for Coinbase. You guys know Kathy Wood's been pretty positive in this thing. She's been buying the heck out of it. So maybe there is a move coming. Maybe you can break this 260 and retest it and then get your move back into these IPO levels as we started to fall. If we get another big crypto move, Coinbase could be one to really benefit from that. And right now, you would not be buying it at a very uh, rich level. You would be buying it probably on a discount. Look at the levels here. Look at that strong triple bottom on Coinbase. At this point, I wouldn't expect Coinbase to go much lower than this in the short term. I would expect to see some positivity here on Coinbase with the crypto move that we have seen. So we'll see what happens. I can't predict this move, but I will tell you that it's definitely on my watch because I know there's a triple bottom here and I know there's some crypto uh, momentum right now and I know Coinbase can take advantage of that. So tomorrow, Monday, all of next week, watch Coinbase, watch this 260 level. Let's see if we can break it. Let's see if it can hold the support. Let's see if we can get that break and retest and try to make a play off of it. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I hope you did enjoy some of that analysis. As I said earlier, the most important thing to watch next week is a rotation in the indices. If we still see that tech weakness come in, watch those Dow stocks, watch those banks for some more momentum. Also, watch those crypto stocks, 
See if that momentum in the crypto market right now floods into the market on Monday. If you guys enjoyed this video, before you head out, please press that like button. If you want to join my Discord chat, it's going to be the first link in the description below. Subscribe to the channel before you head out. Press that bell notification. And of course, come hang out in the live stream tomorrow morning. It's 8 a.m. every single morning, totally free. Come get some analysis on the futures, on some stocks in the pre-market. It's a great place, a great hangout, and I'd love to see you there. With that said, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.